Good evening, and welcome to this week in review. Tonight's stories include Carbo at the Trailer Court, update at the Burgio Bears cleanup, work continues on the Grand Search and Rescue Building, important meeting held for the fish harvesters, these stories plus community events, the BBS Playbill, Off the Rack, and more coming up after this. Here at the War Amps, we return thousands of keys. Not just car keys, keys of every size, every description. Because they came to us with a War Amps key tag. If you don't have a key tag, you never know where your keys will end up. Our key tag service can often return your keys by courier. Sometimes in the same day. The War Amps Key Return Service, securing your peace of mind. On Friday, May the 23rd, we received a call telling us that there's a caribou at the trailer court. Sure enough, across from the trailer court on the ski trail, grazing away was the caribou. Several people told us that a couple of days earlier, another caribou was near the community center. This one seemed quite content enjoying the new grass he was munching on. Thanks to Georgina Fudge for calling us. On Saturday, May the 24th, the Burgio Bears took part in the town cleanup. The boys and their parents were divided up into seven groups, and they went in different areas of the town to pick up the garbage that had accumulated on the roadsides during the winter. Mrs. Tucker, leader for the Burgio Bears, told us that the boys and their parents collected approximately 100 bags of garbage. Prizes were awarded to the three boys who raised the most money. For raising the most money, Dylan Tucker was given a water blaster gun. Brian Sims was given a scooter for second place, and Christopher Ann received a fishing rod and hooks for third place. There were also two other random draws. Cameron Courtney won a small water blaster gun, and Tyler Dumford won a water glider. The total amount raised was $1,000. The boys should be very proud of their efforts to help clean up our town. Congratulations to you all. On Friday, May the 23rd, Newfoundland Hydro gave the workers at the Ground Search and Rescue construction site a helping hand. On Friday, the workers had reached a point when they were ready for the steel beam that would be the main support for the top floor of the new building. With the help of the Hydro's crane, this beam was lifted into place with very little effort. Once the beam was in the right position, workers then secured the beam with lumber. They are now ready for the next stage of construction of the building.
On Sunday, May the 25th, Greg Elliard, our BDDB officer, held an important information meeting for fish harvesters. Approximately 15 fish harvesters attended the meeting. The BDDB officer, Greg Elliard, welcomed everyone. The purpose of the meeting was to inform fishers about the government program put in place for those who may be affected by the card closure of 3 p.m. A COA will administer funding and approve projects. This program is only for an 18-month period and will be short-term incentives with the main purpose is to make sure fish harvesters who will not be EI eligible because of the 3 p.m. closure will receive their stamps. The BDDB has already applied for four projects under the COA in the event some of our fishers may need them. To qualify, a fish harvester must have fished in 3 p.m. last year and because of the closure will not qualify for EI this year. Fish harvesters are responsible for identifying themselves as eligible for the program. They may obtain records from either buyers, HRDC, DFO, or FFAW to prove that they qualify for this federal aid program. With any aid program, there are certain criteria that must be met. The fish harvesters will have to prove that 25% of their catch comes from the affected area and that they have a minimum of $3,000 landing from the affected areas. If fish harvesters catch enough of other species and get their EI, they will not be eligible for this federal program. Even if their EI is low, they still will not be eligible. Fifteen fish harvesters attended this meeting and not one of them will qualify for the program. The fish harvesters felt that this program was put in place to look good, but not to really help anyone. Stay tuned for more of this Week in Review coming up after this. I'm Cliff Chatterton, the uh, CEO of the War Amps. I would like to take this opportunity of thanking this station for using our productions. Oh yes, we do them in-house, but they are of very high quality. Proof? ask about the many international awards they win. However, without the cooperation of this station, the important messages they contain would never get to the public. On Monday of this week, representatives from the Newfoundland and Labrador Lung Association, Sandra Clare, made a presentation to the Burgio Lions Club for their continued support over the past 25 years. After the presentation, Executive Director Peggy Johnson had a word, few words to say. Well, Stan, we just wanted to take this opportunity since we're in the area to come by and thank you and all the Lions Club here in Burgio for all their hard work over the years for the Lung Association. 25 years and going strong. Thank you very much. And I'm really pleased we've had the opportunity to meet with you and give you this token of our appreciation. Thank you so much. Well, on behalf of the Lions Club, I'm happy to accept it. And uh, I guess it's one of the services we do, and we're only too glad to do it, and hope we can do it for another 20 or 25 well, years. Well, we're counting on you. <laughs> I don't know who's going to be around. I may not be around, but I'm, Me sure, either, I'm sure somebody will be. And, uh, <laughs> thank thank you. you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thanks. In, in 1944, when Lung Association was formed, was TB Association then, and it was formed primarily to fight tuberculosis in Newfoundland, but it was focused towards rural Newfoundland where the services were not in place. And for that reason, uh, it became m appreciated significantly more in the outlying areas of Newfoundland, and even today, there's where we get most of our support. People remember um, what we did with tuberculosis, and today, they are still really grateful for what transpired. Today, of course, it's like we're in Burgio, to, in Ramia today, congratulating the school for having a completely smoke-free population. We're moving into a lot of new areas, but rural Newfoundland is still there with us, supporting all of our programs, and so that's why we want to say thank you. We couldn't, we couldn't survive without the help of rural Newfoundland, and particularly places like Burgio, and even more particularly, the Lions Club. Thank you very much. The Burgio Lions Club has been an active organization in our community for a long time. They carry out many worthwhile projects and the Lions Annual Speak Off is one of these projects. 
The Speak Off provides students at the iSchool with opportunities to public speak. Just recently, the Lions Club received a letter from one of this year's participants, Belinda Vatcher. Belinda thanked the Lions Club for providing her with the opportunity to participate in municipal, regional, and district speak offs. She went on to say that Burjo is bliss with such a community oriented organization such as the Lions Club and that the both Lions and the Lioness are a positive groups. Belinda thanked them for their hospitality, respect, and genuine interest, and she was proud to represent them in the district speak off. Thanks to Gord Ingram for providing us with this information so we could share it with other members of our community. We are truly fortunate to have an organization like the Virgil Lions and Lioness working in our town. On Monday, May the 26th, the Calder Health Care Center hosted their annual Volunteer Appreciation Night. Many volunteer groups were well represented at the event planned in their honor. Biv Titford, Director of Volunteer Resources, welcomed everyone. Ms. Titford invited Rose Staples Payne to bring greetings on behalf of Alan Kendall, CEO of the Western Healthcare Corp. Lori Porter brought greetings from the staff and residents at the Calder Healthcare Center and thanked the volunteers for all they do for the residents. Rob Kenney, Vice President of the Human Resources, also brought greetings. There were some prize draws. Sheila Pink won a scented candle. Diane Kendall won a t-shirt. Louise Anderson won a sun visor. And Laura Piercy won a canvas tote bag. Bev concluded by thanking Lori Porter, Jeanette Ann, Diane Swift, and Elizabeth Dallman for all their help in organizing the Volunteer Appreciation Night. There was a wonderful array of food, nicely arranged and displayed. There was also a refreshment table with wines and fruit punches. The volunteers were invited to sample all the food and refreshments and enjoy their well-deserved evening. Yes, the team On Wednesday of this week, we visited the United Church Project. This was supposed to be the last week of the project. However, because of the amount of work left to do, the project was granted a four-week extension. To date, most of the outside work has been completed. All the siding has been put on. The porch wasn't supposed to be touched. However, once the old siding was removed, they realized that it was rotten. The old thing had to be replaced, and now they have a new porch. There will now be one washroom change room instead of two washrooms. The sleeper was also rotten and had to be replaced. The old hot air furnace was removed, and the new water line put in to the awl as well as the manse. These were unexpected jobs that had to be taken care of and took more time than the project had. Therefore, the workers were grateful for the extra four weeks to complete their work. In the next four weeks, the workers have to finish running the footer, framing the basement all around with 2x2, two two, insulation, plywood, and completing the job with blue siding. The water pipes will be removed from under the building and will go inside and be cased in. There are roof vents to be installed. The inside of the building will have a nine foot drop ceiling, new underlay topped with industrial tiles. The kitchen cupboards will be painted and the walls will also be painted. The work is coming along rather well and with another four weeks, the workers feel they have plenty of time now to complete the job and do it well. On Thursday of this week, Constable Ron Caldwell dropped by our studio to give us an update of some upcoming events for Cops for Cancer. We have with us in our studio again today, Constable Ron Caldwell. Welcome again, Ron. Thank How you. are you today? I'm always good. 
That's good. Um, we're going to be talking about Cops for Cancer coming up. Yes. And some of the things that you've uh, you've got planned. You've had a, a very successful bingo on Wednesday. We had a TV bingo and uh, raised in the Cindy of $650 at that. So I'd like to thank everybody for uh, playing and uh, supporting Cops for Cancer. Okay. Now, I uh, understand you had some more... Uh, projects lined up? We've got a few things lined up. Uh, one of the reasons uh, we're doing these extra things is I'm not going to be here come sand and sea time as we always do. Now whether it's carried on at that date or not, I'm, I plan on doing my head shaving before then. Now as for an exact date, I'm not sure yet and, and I'll, I'll get back to you definitely with that and let you know. But we do have a few things lined up. Um, we're right now we're selling tickets on a, a surprise box. It's got all sorts of little, there's some handcrafted items and some Cancer Society items and Cops for Cancer items, and it's a it's a nice little box, it's value about a hundred dollars, and, uh, and we're selling the tickets at the the standard price, and they'll be available for myself or at the office, and a few other people around town. I'm I'm not sure who has them right at the moment, but so uh, there's that, and then the uh, Lions Club has uh, uh, graciously offered to hold a special bingo for me one Saturday evening, uh, and uh, the proceeds going to Cops for Cancer, so okay. that'll be. That, that's usually a very good fundraiser, that one. So. Uh, will you be having your uh, pledge sheets around town like you did in previous years? Yes, the pledge sheets are, are around, and anybody that's interested in picking one up and, and collecting pledges, uh, they're more than welcome to drop by. They're available from myself or at the office. And okay, now because a person picks up a pledge sheet doesn't mean they have to have their each sheet. Oh, no, no, no. They okay. can if they wish, and uh, yeah, okay. anybody out there uh, that's willing to, to join me, it's uh, this is the fourth year for me. Uh, since I've been to Burgio in about six years in total. And uh, we did really well last year. We raised right around $3,200, and there was 30000 raised in the province, so the, the town of Burgio was, was good for 10%, uh, more than 10% of what was raised in the whole island. So we're obviously uh, very generous, and that's, that's well known to, to your viewers anyway. So, um, Have you decided, uh, ex well, you already stated that you didn't know when you were going to have your each shape, but do you know where you might have it done? I'm not even sure of that yet. Okay. Uh, like the Sand and Sea was the, the, the park was the venue for the last two years. Yes. And it, it's such an excellent site because there's such a crowd there. Yeah. But um, maybe if they have a family fun day at the park one day beforehand, or maybe we'll do it in the parking lot like we did the first year here. Yeah. Um, we raised a few dollars that year as well. There was three or four of us got our head shape. Uh, always, always looking for a special person to join us for the head shaving. The last couple of years, we, we were lucky. Uh, Linda Pink two years ago, yes. and then Glenda Ricketts last year. So yes. if there's a, a brave lady out there that wants to join us, uh, we'd be, we'd be very pleased to, to have you come on board and, and help us with our fundraiser. Okay. So if anybody needs any pledge sheets, they just contact you. Yes, they can contact me, or if I'm not at the office, uh, they'll be available there during working hours. Uh, Judy will help them. No. Them, so. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I'm. Uh, I'm, like I say, I'm very pleased with the with the start, and we've got over 20 percent of what we raised last year already with just one evening's work, basically. So, hopefully, we'll uh, we'll do as well as or better than last year, and uh, as long as the people continue to be generous as they always are, then uh, it'll do very well again. Okay. Well, we thank you very much for coming in, and if there's anything uh, else that we can do. Uh, to get your message out here, just drop by any time. Okay, thank you. Well, anything that's coming up, I'll make sure that there's notices on TV. Okay, thanks. Thank you. On Thursday of this week, we were invited to the Food Land for a special presentation. Here's the pennies that we went to that store. Gord, do you want to tell us how you uh, got so many pennies in your can or your jar? Yeah, what we did, Marie, um, we started last year uh, from customers uh, leaving pennies or some loose chains on the, uh, on the checkouts. 
uh, we end up taking these and putting them into this container. And uh, some customers, a lot of staff members there, give out a few pennies or whatever they took and put them in the container as well. Okay, now I see you have some uh, dollar bills, and uh, you already told us, but you might tell us again how they how they came to be in there. Well, really, yeah, it's uh, true, uh, true honesty, I guess, and uh, that is we had uh, two employees that picked up uh, the $10 bill, or one employee that picked up the $10 bill, we had another employee that picked up the $5 bill. Uh, of course, we waited and to see if anybody would claim the $10 or the $5. So upon a period of waiting, nobody claimed. So uh, two employees wanted to put the uh, $10 and the $5 bill into the Jane Wayne case. Okay. All right. Um, girls, I understand that the, you've uh, right at, well, not including that there, you've raised uh, $441 so far. And that's uh, through pennies and donations, I believe, is it? Okay, so will you girls be going in uh, St. John's yourself this year, or Corner Rock this year? No? Okay. So I believe Melissa's going in, is she? Okay. So she's, is she going to be taking your donations as well? Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot for talking with us. Stay with us for Off the Rack, the community events, and the BBS Playbill, all after this. My name is Marks and I'm a champ. My foot got caught in a lawn tractor accident. I wear my artificial leg to play soccer, to run, and lots of other stuff. If it can happen to me, it can happen to you. I go on safety walks and tell other kids to play safe. Did you play anywhere near this busy road? No! Spot the danger before you play, play safe! Off the rack. This week as we scanned our tape rack, we came across a tape of the come home year and some clips of the young people doing a talent show. Let's look back to 1988. As the young people of our town held their own talent show. <laughs> Playbill. Tune in on Tuesday for a rebroadcast of Pansy's Garden. And I'll be here again next week with This Week in Review. For This Week in Review, I'm Marie Rose. Good night and God bless.